The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet, starring the entire Nelson family. Here is Ozzy, who plays the part of Ozzy Nelson. And, of course, his lovely wife, Harriet, as Harriet Nelson. The older of the Nelson boys, David, appears as David Nelson. And his younger brother, the irrepressible Ricky, played by Ricky Nelson. The Nelson's next-door neighbor, Thorny, is played by Don DeFore. More coffee, dear? Oh, uh, no, thanks. I, I, I have uh, enough left right here. You didn't finish your eggs, did you? Oh, well, I, I, I ate uh, most of them. Uh, how come you fried the eggs this morning? Oh, I don't know. You've had boiled eggs every morning for so long, I just thought I'd fry them, give you a little change. You didn't like them, did you? Oh, well, yeah, I, uh, they were okay. It's, uh, I ate most of them. Yes, but you didn't like them, I could tell. You didn't smile. Oh, well, I don't very often smile when I'm eating eggs. <laughs> Not unless it happens to be a, a wide egg sandwich, and then I, I kind of... <laughs> I'm sorry, I just thought I'd give you something a little different for a change. Oh, uh, I liked them. They were okay. It's just that I usually have boiled eggs, and I, I don't think there's any reason to change just for the sake of changing, you know? I suppose that's a masculine attitude. Personally, I like things a little different once in a while. Gives you a fresh outlook. I don't know, maybe I'm just in a reckless mood today. I've even been thinking about having my hair cut. How do you think I'd look with one of the new shorter cuts? Well, I wouldn't want you to get a crew cut. <laughs> Don't be silly. I wouldn't get a crew cut. At least until the middle of summer. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't noticed, though, dear. Most of the girls are wearing their hair with a shorter hairdo. You know, it's a funny thing about women. Practically all men like women with their hair long and their skirts short. <laughs> and look what happens. Reverse psychology. Women do the opposite to get things they want. Look at the attention women have had in the past two years. Well, okay. I mean, if you like people staring at you as you walk down the street... Not especially. It's the reason they lengthen the skirts. But, uh, what about your hair? I mean, you couldn't wait till it grew back in, and now you want to chop it all off again. Well, evidently, you don't want me to. Well, I don't care. It's your head. <laughs> the funny thing, I noticed that when I was brushing my teeth this morning. Well, no, I. but you asked me how I like your hair, and uh, frankly, I don't care. I mean... You cut it any way you want. As I say, it's it's uh, your head. Oh, I, I uh, already said that, didn't I? It's funny how men get set in their ways. It seems to be a masculine trait to resist change of any sort. For instance, you like my hair this way, so you don't want me to cut it any shorter. You like boiled eggs, fried won't do. Well, it isn't a question of men being set in their ways. At least I'm not. I happen to like my head boiled. I, I, I... <laughs> My eggs boiled. I, I've liked them that way for years. Just because I like the same thing year after year doesn't mean I'm set in my ways. Uh, what does it mean? It means I'm stubborn. I, 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 I mean, it, it means that I'm a fellow of average, normal tastes. I mean, lots of people like extraordinary things. They like unusual things. Well, I happen to be conservative, and, and I like things just sort of average. <laughs> I mean, you get excited about. No, well, I mean, I, I'm sorry, I'm not getting excited. It's just that I'm an average type of guy who likes things average. That's all, a man of average tastes. Do we have any more sugar, dear? this fence last fall? Well, this is Catherine's idea. She had me paint it white before because she expected a lot of snow during the winter. Now she wants it green to match the lawn. <laughs> Women get some crazy ideas, don't they? Uh, you never know what they're going to think of next. So darn changeable. They're never satisfied to leave things go the way they are. I think that's feminine nature, Oz. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you this. How do you like your eggs cooked? Sunny side up. We're going to eat right here in the yard? <laughs> oh, no, no. I, 
I just thinking of something. For years, I've been enjoying a couple of medium boiled eggs for breakfast every morning. Been enjoying them for years. All of a sudden, this morning, without a word of warning, I get fried eggs. Well, I hope you didn't take it sitting down, Oz. If I were you, I'd object plenty. Why don't you put an ad in the paper? I will not be responsible for any eggs fried by my wife. <laughs> no, it's not only the eggs, Thorny. It, it's the whole idea. And what would you say if your wife suddenly walked up to you and said, I want to get my hair cut right now? Would you object? Well, I certainly would. Put Sir? my foot right down. Absolutely, because you like her hair the way it is, nice and long. Well, not necessarily long, Oz. I just want her to have hair. She just had it cut yesterday. <laughs> Because I like Harriet's hair the way it is, because I like my eggs boiled, right away I'm set in my ways. Does that mean that I'm set in my ways? Am I an old fuddy-duddy? Am I a stick in the mud? Am I narrow-minded? The answer is no. Oz, if you ask me a question, let me answer it. <laughs> you feel that you're set in your ways, Barney? Well, not necessarily. Of course not, but women don't see it that way. Because a guy enjoys boiled eggs in the morning, they want to change him. Switch to fried eggs. Does that make any sense? No. Now, there you go, answering again. We go both the same night every week. Does that mean that we're... No. In our ways? No. Beat you that time. I'm on my way down to the drugstore right now. I'm going to buy two quarts of ice cream. A quart of chocolate and a quart of vanilla. Because I happen to like vanilla and chocolate. But does that mean that I'm set in my ways? Of course it doesn't, Thorny. You know, Oz, I think I'll walk down the drugstore with you. I think the new Esquire magazine is in. There you are. You always walk down the drugstore with me around the end of the week because that's when Esquire magazine comes in. Doesn't mean you're set in your ways. As a matter of fact, you don't have to buy Esquire. You could buy the, the Housewives Gazette. Yeah, if I were a housewife. <laughs> no, I, I mean, if you really wanted to, you could buy the Housewives Gazette instead of Esquire because you aren't set in your ways. Oz, I like Esquire. Well, yes, I know, but you could buy the Housewives Gazette instead, though. That's the point I'm trying to make. Oz, I just changed my mind. I don't think I'll walk down to the drugstore with you today. Well, why not? I have a feeling I'd come home with a Housewives Gazette. <laughs> Mary Dunkel. Oh, hello, Mary. How's your cold? Oh, I'm nearly back to normal. The doctor gave me a shot of a wonderful serum yesterday. Fixed me up overnight. Oh, well, that's fine. Of course, I still cough a little and sneeze a little and wheeze a little. I thought you were all fixed up. Well, the hives are gone. Hives? Yeah, the hives from the first shot. Oh, you had two shots? Well, yes. You see, one for my cold. But my system had a negative reaction, so I broke out in hives. Then he gave me a second shot for the hives. What did he do for your cold? Well, I'm going over to see him in a few minutes. Of course, he's working under a handicap. He's sick in bed with a cold himself. <laughs> How are Ozzie and the boys? Fine, thanks. Oh, I almost forgot. Remember you told me you were looking for a rug? Well, listen to this. On the way downtown this morning, I saw the most beautiful brown rug in the Emporium window, just perfect for your living room. I'm way ahead of you, Mary. You've seen it? Yesterday. In fact, I'm having it delivered tonight while Ozzie's at the bowling alley. You're going to surprise him, huh? In a way, yes. You know how men resist any changes around the house? Well, I figure if he walks in and there it is in familiar surroundings, he's much more apt to like it. Just like her. I remember I wanted new kitchen linoleum once, so I had the man put it down, had it all waxed before Herb came home. Did he like it? Well, I think he would have if he hadn't broken his arm when he walked in and slipped on it. <laughs> but I think you're doing the smart thing, Harriet. I hope so. I figure it's worth trying anyway. Let me know how it turns out, huh? Okay, Mary. Goodbye. <laughs> you, Mr. Nelson. Be sure and go down to the Bijou this week. They have a picture there that is simply terrific. Oh, oh, fine. I'll, I'll go down and see it. Oh, it's so good. It's the return engagement of a re-release of a remake by special request of the manager. <laughs> that sounds pretty interesting. <laughs> What's the name of it? By 
Sally Granger. Oh, oh yes, yes, that's a, a nice name for a picture. Oh, it's such a wonderful movie, Mr. Nelson. Somebody ought to make a book out of it. It's about a man, a man who is completely irresponsible. Oh, I just adore irresponsible men. <laughs> And the woman in the picture, she was irresponsible, too. Oh, uh, an irresponsible woman? <laughs> what carefree lovers they were. They kissed on the street. They kissed on the bus. They kissed in crowded railroad stations. They wanted people to see him kissing. Even when the hero took the heroine home, he'd strike a match so people could see him kissing goodnight. <laughs> well, that's... Very interesting, Emmy Lou. I think I'd better get down to the drugstore. Oh, he was so romantic, so unpredictable. Toward the end of the picture, he held the girl in his arms, and everyone in the theater thought they were going to get married. But they didn't. He didn't even kiss her. Well, maybe he ran out of matches. He should have seen it. He wouldn't work. He was undependable. He was fickle. He had bad habits. He beat her. He was irresponsible. He didn't earn a living. He borrowed money from her. He stole. He lied. He gambled. Gee, he was cute. Now, now, wait a minute. Do you mean to say women actually like a man of that type? Well, of course they do. What fun is a man who does exactly the same thing every day? What fun is it when you know exactly when your husband is coming home? Oh, that reminds me. I'm, I'm late now, Emmy. It takes all the joy out of life to be married to a dull, stodgy, conservative husband. Women like thrills, excitement. They like a man who's impetuous, gay, devil may care. <laughs> Watch your language, Emmy Lou. <laughs> they like a wild life with an exciting man. A man who does fantastically imaginative, unpredictable things. I imagine you were like that when you were young, weren't you, Mr. Nelson? Oh, what do you mean when I was young, Emmy Lou? Golly, I'm not so predictable. I I'm not set in my ways. Nobody knows what I'm going to do next. Uh, look at his necktie, for instance. See those ends? One much longer than the other. How oh, exciting. Oh. Well, I don't want to keep you, Mr. Nelson. Where did you say you were going? Uh, down the drugstore to get a couple of quarts of ice cream. Oh, yes, a quart of chocolate and a quart of vanilla. That's where you're wrong. I'm going to get three quarts of Tutti Fruity. <laughs> oh, Mr. Nelson, you're so unpredictable. <laughs> The average husband is a pretty predictable fellow. He comes down to breakfast at the same time every morning, drinks his orange juice, picks up the morning paper, eats a couple of eggs, and hurries out the front door. He then remembers that he's forgotten to kiss his wife goodbye, hurries back into the house, kisses her goodbye, and hurries out again. Ozzie Nelson, being a typical husband, has followed pretty close to the pattern up until now, but something tells me he's liable to become unpredictable any minute now. Uh, three quarts of Tutti Frutti. Oh, Dave, have you seen your father? No, I haven't, Mom. I wonder what's keeping him. Oh, Mr. Miller sometimes runs out of vanilla. Maybe Pop had to go to a different drugstore. Well, he should be back by now. He's always home at 6 o'clock. You don't suppose Pop had an accident? Oh, don't be silly, Ricky. Pop wouldn't have an accident on his bowling night. <laughs> Well, he'd better hurry up. I've got the road set for 6.30. Oh, you know Pop. He's never late for dinner. Did you tell him about the rug? No, I haven't, and don't you either. I want to surprise him. The man's coming from the store to put the rug down while your father's bowling tonight. So don't you tell him now and spoil a surprise. Hey, that's pretty good. How'd you think of that, Mom? Well, I don't mess around, boy. <laughs> Ozzie? Hi, everybody. Oh, there you are. I was beginning to get worried about you. Oh, well, uh, first of all, I decided not to take the car. I decided to walk down there. And it turned out to be such a beautiful, balmy evening. You know how unpredictable I am. <laughs> well, I decided to walk home the long way. So I went all the way down to Brinkerhoff Street, and then I strolled over by Mount Vernon Street. Then I came around there by the park, 
And then I uh, turned down Maple and uh, went back to the drugstore. Well, why'd you go back to the drugstore? Uh, the ice cream had melted. <laughs> what kind of ice cream is this, Pop? Oh, uh, that's uh, Tutti Frutti. What's Tutti Frutti? Uh, well, it's uh, ice cream with pieces of uh, fruity in it and a lot of little uh, chunks of uh, Tutti all... Uh... <laughs> I'm not sure whether I'm going to like Tutti Frutti. Well, you'd better like it. If you don't eat your Tutti Frutti ice cream, you won't get any dessert for dinner. <laughs> Doesn't sound right. Hired, if the boys don't eat their dessert, what don't they get? They don't get any carrots. Oh, that sounds much better, huh, Dave? I'll say. Well, sit down, dear. I'll bring you a glass of tomato juice. Oh, uh, I don't think I'll have any tomato juice tonight. Harriet, I think I'll have a glass of champagne instead. Champagne? <laughs> yeah, don't you remember I bought us a bottle of champagne for our anniversary? Oh, well, we used that six months ago. Don't you remember the Dunkles and the Thornberries came over and helped us celebrate? Oh, oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. I'll bring you a glass of ginger ale. The bubbles go up your nose the same way. <laughs> no, 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 that's okay. I think I'll go upstairs and change my clothes. Well, you look fine to me. Well, yes, but you just mentioned the Randolphs, and it reminded me of that wonderful time we had at their New Year's Eve party. Remember, we were dressed formally, and I had on my tuxedo. I thought I'd put it on again now and sort of relive it up a little. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to be so unpredictable. You just never know what I'm going to do next, do you? Oh, yes, I do. You're going to hurry up because dinner's almost ready. Uh, okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> sure is nice of you to put up with these crazy, changeable moods of mine. In fact, you know what I think I'll do right after I wash my hands? Can't imagine. I'm going to dry them on hers. <laughs> I don't know what's come over Pop. Crazy, mixed-up kid. <laughs> Gee, I wonder what's keeping Pop, huh? Oh, he's getting dressed for dinner. You mean he's getting dressed up? Mm-hmm, that's right. How come? Oh, I don't know. He had such a nice time at the party last New Year's Eve that he wants to wear his tuxedo again. I think it's a nice idea. He's gonna look pretty crazy down at the bowling alley, boy. <laughs> well, I'm sure he'll change before he goes bowling. Oh, you boys go ahead and start eating. All right. Come on, dear, dinner's all ready. <laughs> uh, Harriet, have you seen my couplings anyplace? Oh. <laughs> look at the things. Where'd you get that outfit? Well, while I was upstairs changing my clothes, I suddenly remembered I'd had an even better time at the party Halloween. <laughs> I hope you don't plan to sit down to dinner in those awful rags. Oh, what do you mean? This is a rather formal outfit, Harriet. I'm wearing a necktie. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like it? <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty crazy outfit, Pa. Yeah, this is my casual outfit. It's very nice for lounging around the freight yards. <laughs> You just don't know what I'm going to do next, do you, Harriet? <laughs> no, but I know what you're not going to do next. You're not going to sit down to dinner in those awful clothes. Oh, Harriet. You heard me. Hit the road, Bo. <laughs> Fine thing when a man can't even be unpredictable in his own home. <laughs> Your banjo? I didn't even know you had one. Oh, yes. I, I have a, uh, an old banjo around here. I thought I might strum a few tunes this evening. Does that sound like fun? Well, aren't you going bowling tonight? Oh, uh, no. I, I don't think I'll go. Well, you've got to go bowling tonight. <laughs> Why? Well, well, it's because it's your bowling night. Well, I know, but suppose it is my bowling night. You know me. I'm so moody and unpredictable. Oh, look, you wouldn't want to disappoint Sonny. Now, look, I've yeah. got all your bowling things right down here. You don't even have to go upstairs. Well, there there is. Now, go ahead. <laughs> Darn family's getting unpredictable. Hey, Oz. Oh, hi, Thorny. Hey, what happened? I thought you were going to stop by for me. Oh, well, I'm a little late, so what? The guys can wait. Well, come on. I told them we'd be there at 8 o'clock. Oh, gone it. What's the matter? I'll be right back. I left my bowling shoes in the house. <laughs> oh, that's the first time I've ever seen a pair of shoes that follow you out the door. <laughs> What's going on around here lately? Oh, come on. Let's go, Oz. Hey, Oz, Oz. Do you know that guy? What guy? Well, the guy that's coming toward us with a body over his shoulder. Oh, yeah. Oh, excuse me, gentlemen. Could you... Aren't you Thornberry? Well, yeah, but I don't know you... Don't you remember me? Mulligan. 
I was the other end man at the Elks Minstrel Show. Oh, what do you know? Sure, of course. How are you? Why? This is Mr. Nelson. Oh, oh how yeah, I remember you. You were the ringmaster in the big circus number, too. Yeah, that's right. You were practically the head of the show. Oh, go on. It wasn't much. Uh, what are you doing this thing of the woods? Huh? I came over to deliver this rug. Some woman had to have it put down tonight. Her husband's a bonehead. He don't like things changed around. Uh, <laughs> what's the name on it? Uh, name's Nelson. Hey, do you happen to know Mr. Nelson? Nelson? Gee, we're the only Nelsons on this block. Oh, well, then you must be the... <laughs> no offense for what I said, Mr. Nelson. I didn't know you were the bonehead. <laughs> hey, no wonder Harriet was so anxious to get me out of the house, Thorny. She practically pushed me out. Pull the fast one on you, huh? Yeah, that's what she thinks. But I just thought of a terrific gag we could pull on her. Would you care to join us, Mr. Mulligan? Thanks, I'd be glad to. You better make mine a short one, though, you know, during working hours. No, 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 no. I mean, in a gag. Now, listen to this, see? Harriet thinks she's going to pull a real surprise. She bought the rug, and I didn't know anything about it. Now, you fellows have heard the old expression, snug as a bug in a rug, haven't you? Yeah. Well, here's my idea. You and Thorny carry the rug in, you see, uh. and you unroll it on the living room floor. <laughs> This. When's the man going to get here with a rug, Mom? Oh, any minute now. I'm glad he didn't get here any earlier. I had a tough time getting your father out of the house. Here, put that in the dining room. I want the floor as clear as possible in here. Where do you want this chair, Mom? Oh, put that in the dining room, too. Gee, the dining room's beginning to look like the living room. Near the attic. What do you think you are, Atlantic City? Come on, boy, chop chop. <laughs> Just a minute. Oh, hello, Mr. Mulligan. Yes, bring the rug right in here. Well, Thorny, what are you doing? Well, I met Mulligan outside and thought I'd give him a hand with this rug. It's pretty heavy sometimes. Oh, I'm sorry about making you deliver it tonight, Mr. Mulligan. That's all right. I wasn't doing anything in particular. Just eating dinner. <laughs> yeah. What makes the rug so lumpy? Oh, that. Oh, well, you see, well, uh, when, when they... Uh, what does make the rug so lumpy, Mr. Thornberry? Oh, uh, mothballs. <laughs> That's right. It happens all the time. If uh, you'll just tell us where you want it now, uh, Mrs. Nelson, we'll unroll it for you. Oh, no, Mr. Mulligan, don't unroll it. Just stand it over there in the corner. Well, oh, I can't stand it in the corner. I don't remember which end is ahead. I mean, uh, which end is up. I know, but Thorny, if Ozzie doesn't like it, Mr. Mulligan would just have to come back again in the morning and roll it up. No, just throw it over there in the corner until I find out how Ozzy likes it. Believe me, Harriet, he's gonna like it a lot better than rolls. But he's such an unpredictable person, he may not even want a new rug. Oh, let him unroll it, Mom. Yeah, come on, Mom, we want to see it. Well, all right, unroll it. Okay, Mulligan, let's go. Wait a minute, wait a minute, I gotta make my speech. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the wonder of the ages. You are about to witness the only time in history that a man, cold sober, mind you, has been rolled in his own living room. Come on, Tony, let's go. Heave ho! <laughs> How unpredictable. 